And it's kind of interesting that we are 100, uh, 50 years later. <laughs> Could it be that there are plenty of reset? They have to start from where they were in 1973. It could very well possibly be. Monaco 64 here. It's uh, Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. As you can see, uh, I'm not at home. My wife and I have gone away for a few days. Uh, Rudy's been looked after, <laughs> not to worry. We thought about bringing him here. But uh, it's probably, uh, yeah, he's a bit too young. It was a fairly long drive. So we're still in the UK. Um, beautiful place. I'm walking in the woods. Um, so let's talk about what's going on from what I've seen. Uh, I, of course, I won't be following things as closely. But uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of news out there. Well, one thing that I've noticed that Tavi Costa has covered and I've been looking at is that the uh, twin deficit so the current account deficit of the US and the fiscal deficit or the budget deficit is at the highest level uh, since the uh, COVID crisis and it's also at the same level as the 08 crisis and <laughs> we're supposedly not in a crisis but I think we are and what's that crisis well, I think it's a dollar crisis, and uh, some someone's noted that uh, the UFO uh, story is a cover for that. It's a little bit like uh, apparently Chuck Schumer in the Senate is talking about it. Someone compared him to uh, Baghdad Bob <laughs> when the Americans invaded uh, Baghdad and uh, there are tanks behind him and fires and everything and he said everything's fine so uh, that could be why i haven't been following this ufo story because i think it's just a, a distraction anyway um so the the dollar is also looking pretty precarious uh, versus the other major fiat currencies but you know that all other major fiat currencies are going to go down with the dollar because the dollar is the top top dog. It's uh, the derivative of the, whole, of the whole system. So if the dollar goes, um, everything goes. And <laughs> with that, uh, we can cover what's going on in the rest of the world, partly concerning the BRICS because India and Indonesia have announced that uh, they're going to start trading with their own currencies, the rupee and the rupiah, uh, for bilateral trade. And uh, some people, uh, and I'm not being like arrogant or anything, but a lot of people don't even know where those two countries are on the map. But did you know that they, uh, their population represents 21% of the planet's population? I think they've got about 1.68 billion in population. So I think that's huge. It's similar to what uh, we saw earlier this year when Brazil and China announced they're gonna deal in their own currencies. So um, it's almost like uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg. Is the dollar dropping because of these announcements or is the dollar dropping because of the f fiscal recklessness uh, that uh, the U U.S. government uh, has right now. I mean, I I'm not too sure where it is. I think it's 15% of GDP almost, these twin uh, deficits. And, and that would only happen in a crisis. So uh, you kind of wonder whether they're going to... Basically, uh, if you uh, look at GDP, the, uh, the uh, equation for GDP adds government spending. So you could argue that we're already in a recession and we've been in one since last year. If you remember well, the, uh, in the first two quarters of 2022, we have negative GDP, but they changed the definition, right? So now if you st strip out all the deficit spending, uh, the U US economy is not in good shape, but I think they're gonna keep uh, just inflating away. A and that's the reason why the dollar is uh, losing so much value so quickly. Now I wanted to uh, 
talk a little bit about the the UK and I have to say we drove up we drove up north and uh, it was nice I haven't been as far north uh, in England as we are right now. Well, I have. I I've been to the Lake District before, which is west of here. So I am in North Yorkshire. And I have to say it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's a shame <laughs> uh, uh, we have uh, the government and the political class we have because it's a very nice country. Uh, the people are nice and I think we could do really well. But right now we're in trouble. Uh, well, not us, but the government, and it affects all of us, unfortunately, because of taxation and inflation. I was reading that um, right now, well, this fiscal year, uh, the government is going to be issuing 240 billion pounds <laughs> in guilt. That's like more than 10% of the economy, and it's three times the average that we've seen in the last decade. Tomorrow, we've got the CPI numbers. We, of course, people call it the inflation numbers and ex expect it to remain above 8% at 8.2. And uh, unfortunately, we have a, a debt problem, not just the government, but uh, a lot of uh, households with their mortgages. And in the UK, mortgages are usually fixed for two to five years. Uh, people can't fix mortgages for 30 years like they do in the US. Uh, and even though uh, guilt yields have stabilized uh, of recent, uh, I think uh, it's going to go a lot higher. I was reading uh, an article in the FT this morning that um, the big uh, bond fund managers worldwide, they're trying to uh, avoid guilt, and that's a bad sign. Uh, I'm uh, not sure what's going to happen. Maybe the Bank of England will have to... Uh, start QE again because they're they're supposedly right now I haven't checked the numbers that much they're supposedly um, uh, unwinding their balance sheet I think they are but not that quickly and uh, I have to say their uh, data is not as transparent as the Fed you can't go and look in the Fred website <laughs> like a, uh, but I will look look it up there is a, a page in the Bank of England uh, website that you can look it up. So uh, that's what's going on. I, I looked at the markets this morning. I see that gold and silver are doing okay. Uh, gold is uh, testing that 1960 level. I think it's only a matter of time that we break through there. The dollar index as well doesn't look too good. and. Um, of course, the dollar index, as I've said many times, is just a, a distraction. So just turn around and show you here. It's quite a beautiful place. Yeah, it's just a distraction because the dollar index started out at 100 back in 1973. And why did they start the dollar index? Well, because prior to 1973, currencies or money was supposed to be a fixed weight of gold. So... <laughs> To have floating exchange rates would be akin to trading the, uh, the inch, the foot, the pound, the meter, the kilo, every day. <laughs> Wouldn't it be disruptive? And that's what they've done with currencies, unfortunately. So they uh, designed the dollar index to keep track of the major currencies versus the dollar. That's all it is. So in 50 years... Uh, the dollar index has gone nowhere. We're around 100. So what you have to keep in mind is that those currencies are sinking versus real things, especially gold and silver, and it's going to continue. And it's kind of interesting that we are 100 uh, 50 years later. <laughs> Could it be that they're planning a reset? They have to start from where they were in 1973. It could very well possibly be. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I'm not, it's just speculation. I, I'm not a, a fly on the wall of these uh, elites and uh, international institutions meetings. But it's something uh, to think about. So there you go. Um, I'm going to go have uh, some breakfast now. I think breakfast in the hotel we're in is until 9.30, so we've got a bit of time. And um, 
<laughs> don't feel any climate change here. It's nice and cool. You can see that I'm wearing a, a sweater or a jumper. So uh, there you go. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.